G'day, my name is Pete. You're watching Ahead of the Curve. We know that electric vehicles are cheaper, or at least they should be cheaper to service and maintain than their internal combustion engine equivalents. But have you ever looked into the numbers? Have you actually ever done the figures? If not, I think you'll find the following fairly interesting. So let's start off with an average conventional petrol or diesel car. A quick Google search will reveal that the average service in Australia costs $267, and it's recommended that the car be serviced every 10,000 kilometers or at least every six months the average australian does about 15,000 kilometers a year so let's work with that six month interval that would suggest that over a five-year period you'll be paying two thousand six hundred and seventy dollars just in servicing costs and presumably that of course doesn't include things like tire rotation wheel balance and new tires but we'll leave those costs um, to the side for the time being we can add them back on later in the video but um you know, presumably those costs, uh, all else remain, remaining equal, should be equivalent between an EV and a petrol car. Speaking of EVs, I'm sitting in a Tesla Model 3 at the moment. Um, it's, it's my car uh, that I've had for a couple of years. I've got these figures directly from Tesla. But before I go any further, I should mention that the servicing cost for a Tesla could actually end up being zero. Um, not just theoretically, but in practice as well. I know of at least one Tesla owner who's done almost 200,000 kilometers with his car. And this is a car that he's taken across the Nullarbor, across and around Australia, and he's never taken that car to a service center. So um, yes, in practice, the servicing costs could be zero because look, I'm happy to be corrected here, but, and feel free to post your views in the comment section below, but I'm still, I'm fairly certain that Tesla is still the only manufacturer without a formal service schedule that they ask you to adhere to. Legacy automakers and other car manufacturers usually ask at least at 10,000 uh, kilometer or six month interval. But let's assume that you follow Tesla's recommendations. And these are just that, they're just recommendations because if you don't follow them, you're not going to affect your warranty or, or anything like that. So it is uh, your option, but let's assume you decide to follow Tesla's recommendations and let's you know, assume that we're in a warm climate like Australia, so we can ignore one of the uh, service items, which really only relates to snowy environments, you know, in winter where there's salt on the road, etc. So if we ignore that item, there's really only three things that Tesla recommends that you look at, and that's the brake fluid uh, check, uh, which is just a check of uh, the any contaminants or mainly moisture in the brake fluid. Um, there's also a pollen filter or a cabin filter, which uh, is recommended to be replaced. And both the brake fluid and the cabin filter are recommended to be uh, looked at every two years. There's also a tire rotation recommendation every 10,000 kilometers, but as I said, we'll leave that uh, to the side uh, for the time being. So let's say over a four year period, you stick to the recommendations. Um, and uh, actually I should tell you the cost first of all. So. I hope you're sitting down because these are massive costs. So the brake fluid check, and these are costs, like I said, directly from Tesla. They include labor, parts, and GSD, and it's this is Tesla doing the work. So the brake fluid check, granted there's not much involved, $24. The cabin filter replacement, labor, GSD included, $86.90. So let's assume you follow the recommendations and you do both of those every two years. So you'll be doing both of those twice over a four year period. That's a total cost of $221.80. Call that $222 versus $2,670 for an average Australian car. So quite, quite a marked difference there. Now I should mention that the battery, the 12 volt battery may fail, but if, if it fails within the first four years, and if you've done less than 80,000 kilometers during that four year period, you'll be covered by Tesla's warranty. So there will be no costs to replace that battery. But let's say you've done more than 80,000 kilometers or you've gone past that four year period and you need that 12 volt battery to be replaced. That cost is $154, including parts, including labor. Very reasonable. Um, and look, you know, there's this perhaps a fallacy that Tesla is a luxury car maker. And look, <clears throat> yes, it is true. The Model S and the Model X are luxury models. Um, they're they're high-end models. There's no doubt about that. But you could argue the Model 3 is more of a mass market car. Um, but most people, if you 
they haven't heard much about or they don't own a Tesla themselves and they haven't had to look at these costs, most people would say, yes, a Tesla service would cost more than the average car. But um, these numbers, you know, they're, they're a tenth of the amount. And this goes to Tesla's ethos a little bit. Tesla's got a very different business model to that of a legacy auto manufacturer where the, the traditional car maker, they're reliant on the parts and on the servicing and the after sales revenue to remain profitable. Whereas Tesla's business model is 180 degrees opposed to that. They see servicing as a cost center rather than a profit center. In fact, the service personnel, they've got KPIs, key performance indicators, where it's all around making the whole experience as seamless and um, as time efficient for the client as possible. So all these charges, um, Tesla, all these service items, Tesla is more than happy. And actually they prefer to come out and see the client at their house or at their uh, place of business as well, which is um, saves you a bit of time and money as well. Um, uh, and, you know, to change or to check the brake fluid for contaminants, I mean, that's a 15 minute job, if that, uh, probably closer to five minutes, to, to be honest. Um, but look, I should mention um, there is another item that this recommends that you look at, but this is only recommended to be looked at every six years or replaced every six years. And that's the air conditioning desiccant bag which is a, at a cost uh, from Tesla of $404.55. So once again, very competitive compared to regassing a, a, a um, air conditioning system in a um, average internal combustion engine car. So look, as I said, you know, uh, things that you're recommended to do over a four year period, $222 versus 2,670, quite a difference. But let's now add back some of those tire costs. I'll still leave out the wheel balance and the new tires because, you know, that's really dependent on the, the, the individual owner and, and how they drive, etc. But let's add back in the tire rotation. So Tesla recommends that you rotate the tires once every 10,000 kilometers, which means that if you're like most Australians and you drive 15,000 kilometers a year, you'll be doing that once in the first year, twice in the second year, once in the third year, and twice in the fourth year, and so on. So if you add that to <clears throat> the $222 in servicing costs over a five year period that adds up to $557.80 or, or um, $111.56 uh, per year. Um, if we assume a $41 cost for an average tire rotation um, in Australia um, and we add that to the $2,670 to service a internal combustion engine car over a five-year period that adds up to $2,957 over five years or $591.40 a year so roughly $600 versus $111 so quite a quite a marked difference and this sort of goes to the point that I'm trying to make with this being the first video in a, in a series where I'm trying to made the point that a Tesla Model 3, you know, the economics of the car are more superior than pretty much, well, than any other car available in the market, particularly in Australia. And particularly if you keep that car for at least a three year period, the longer you hold on to your Model 3 versus an average Australian car, which costs $40,000, the better off you'll be. But if you hold it for at least a three year period, I'm going to argue that you'll be thousands of dollars better off if you include all major costs, which includes, of course, the upfront cost, but also things like depreciation, maintenance and servicing, which we just discussed, but also fuel costs, registration, insurance, the whole lot. Um, and, you know, <laughs> and you're getting to drive a Tesla rather than an average car as well and all the benefits that that, that entails. So I'm also um, writing an article uh, around this topic and I'll include a link to that in the comment section below. So feel free to click on some of those links and read that, that article. Uh, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up or share it with anyone else that you think may find it valuable. I hope you got some value out of it. Um, like I said, this is uh, the first in a series of video around the economics of owning an EV, particularly a Tesla Model 3. So there'll be more to come. So hit that subscribe button so you can get alerted to the future videos. But for the time being, as always, stay safe, stay sustainable and stay ahead of the curve. Ciao.